would it take for me, an atheist, to believe in the existence of a deity? Well, evidence. Okay, there's more to it than that, so let's do this. Hi everybody, Bionic Dance here. So most of you are probably familiar with Sami Zatari. I assume that's how it's pronounced, I'm not sure I've ever heard it said. Regardless, point is, a little while back, I completely missed it, he asked a bunch of atheists what kind of criteria we would need in order to believe in a deity. Well, then he responded to those responses. And since I'm a little late to the party, well, I'm going to respond to his response to those responses. Sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Point is, a lot of what he says, I'm not sure I'm on board with. In fact, I'm convinced I'm not. So... Let's have a look. One of the overwhelming response that I got from atheists in the comment section, as well as the video responses, was that the evidence that you would require to believe in God would basically be to see a sign being performed right in front of you. Basically a miracle. You know, you witness the miracle for yourself. Well, look, I can't speak for other people. But I personally would need a lot more than that. You see, I would not be able to trust my senses. I would not necessarily be able to say what I saw is what I saw. There are magicians out there, stage magicians, who can perform tricks that look, look like actual magic, that look like they are physics defying, but they're not. Either they are fooling us or with words getting us to fool ourselves. That's happened more than once to a lot of people out there. So why on earth should I take the evidence of my senses for granted? No, no. If I saw a deity, if I saw a god, I would need to get that god into a lab to perform that trick over and over and over until I could make sure that what was happening was defying the laws of science as we know them. I would need to be able to take measurements. I would need to be able to really, really, really make sure. I would need independent verification. All of that kind of thing. And then there's another question. If it really is magic, if it really is some sort of physics-defying magic, who says that it's a god? It could be a wizard. It could be a mage. It could be some sort of Dungeons and Dragons style spell casting, you know, or, or hell, even just like Street Fighter 2, Fireball, all of that. How do we know it's a god? So I would need a hell of a lot more than just seeing a magic trick. So, for example, a cancer, a cancer patient being healed right on the spot. So a person says, I'm going to pray to God. And as a result of that prayer, that person is going to be cured of cancer. Now, see, that's a rotten example, because you can't see cancer. And if it was healed, you couldn't see that either. You'd have to do like I was suggesting and get people into a lab. And even then, you couldn't repeat it. And even then, you got no guarantees it's a god that did it. So, no, that's a terrible example. Or even the other example, you know, the amputee example. You know, if someone has their arm cut off and they don't have an arm and so you pray to God and immediately the arm springs forth and it's right there. Well yeah that does sound better because at least that's not something that can just happen on its own as far as we know anyway but suppose someone did do that how do we know it was a God? How do we know it wasn't just a magic spell? I mean seriously come on if there was the ability to do that, we have no guarantees that it's divine in nature. It could well be some sort of magician, thaumaturgy, whatever, wizardry. We don't know. I mean, seriously, come on. The premise or the discussion is like this. In order for you to believe in God, God has to do something so clear for you. Well, the first response to that is that the evidence you require is already around you. Well, if that were the case, then why haven't we seen it? Maybe it's not as obvious as you think it is. Maybe it's not as clear as you think it is. Maybe it's not as unambiguous as you think it is. Or the other possibility, 
Maybe it's not what you think it is. Maybe it is, in fact, not evidence. You know, you already have the evidence you need. You just need to look at the formation and creation of the universe, the formation of life on Earth, and so forth. But those are completely natural things for which we have explanations. Explanations which don't require a deity at all. So, I'm sorry, but no, that is not evidence of a deity. Certainly not like the regrowing of a limb, which is something that we cannot explain, like these other things you're talking about. So no, that is not evidence. Try again. Now this, uh, of course, is the main dividing line between an atheist and a theist, because a theist looks at those things and he sees that that is the empirical evidence for a god, or, or you could say that's God's fingerprint. God's fingerprint? Well, but see, that's the thing, though. You don't even know that a god does exist. So if you find a fingerprint, how do you know it's his? If you found a fingerprint at a crime scene, but the person who had left it had never been fingerprinted by the police, you could not say whose fingerprint this was. At best, you could say this is John Doe's or Jane Roe's fingerprint. This is the fingerprint of an unidentified person. So even if the things you're describing as evidence were fingerprints of somebody, you have no guarantee that it's a deity or that it's your deity. So. But, well, the thing is, right now, you don't even know that it's a fingerprint at all. All you have is evidence that something happened that you can't explain, where you prefer uh, an explanation that involves a magical sky being. That's not actually evidence, dude. You need so much more than that before you have anything that can even allow you to begin to think about maybe trying to consider reaching a conclusion. But the atheist, on the other hand, sees all of these things and simply thinks science. But the theist, as I said, they look at these things and they look beyond the science. Yes, they understand how these things work, the scientific process behind it, but they go deeper and they conclude that the reason why things work like this is because an intelligent creator made it like this. And they conclude that because they, they justify that conclusion with I mean, seriously, there's no evidence. You look deeper, as you say, but, but at what? What are you actually looking at? I have never heard a theist give evidence or, or to say what they do other than feel. To say other than, well, it just doesn't make sense to me. Therefore, it must be. I have never actually seen a religious person who can say they're looking deeper and then show me what the heck it is they're looking at in any kind of empirical, objective way. It's always, well, they say it's in their heart, but nobody's heart does any thinking. A heart doesn't even feel. It's all up here. But regardless, even if they're speaking purely metaphorically, the fact is they have never shown how they can reach this conclusion, ever unless it comes down to essentially feelings and imagination. After all, if you had a, uh, if you saw a plane, and you know all the mechanical features of a plane, the hydraulics, how it works, how it's in the sky, how it lands, how it pressurizes, all of these things point to an intelligent designer making it that way, which is why it functions. And that's the way a theist looks at the universe. Oh, but there's a great big honk in difference, isn't there? For one thing, we know that humans built that plane. They come right out and admit it. And if we want to, we can build a plane ourselves. We can do the research. We can do the science. We, we can get a job building planes in a factory. I live right near Boeing. If I wanted to, I could help build planes. If we look, we can find a manufacturer's stamp on that plane. We can probably go to a government building and request the specs on that airplane, if we really want to. And we've seen evidence of other things that humans have built. We've, we've actually looked at them, and we can see that this plane is similar. Well, how many other universes do we have to look at to say, this universe looks like God's work? We don't. 
and we don't have a manufacturer stamp on the universe, we can't look at the plans of the universe, we can't go to God's office and ask him about that plane. We can do that if we go to Boeing. Okay, granted, we might have to fight our way through layers of bureaucracy, but the point is that we know how humans build things. We can talk to the humans who build these things. We can get evidence of, of the human influence in the building of these things. We can't have that for a deity. We can't have that for a god. And until we do, you can't look at the universe and say, this is God's handiwork, not without basically talking out of your butt. The mathematical equations are just right. The balance is just right in the universe for life to form on Earth. Wrong. You've got it exactly backward. Life is suited to be on this Earth, not Earth suited to life. We are not some end goal that needs a home base. It doesn't work like that. Life adapted to this planet. If this planet were different, life would be different. That's the way it works. And if you learned about science, if you learned about evolution, if you learned about natural selection, if you learned about how the, the breeding worked, where the, the life forms better suited to their environment survived and thrived and procreated more, then you'd understand that, okay, life is suited to its environment, not the environment to life. And if the environment were different, life would be different. Hell, that's the whole thing about the, the extinction of the dinosaurs. Conditions were just right for the dinosaurs, and then something changed environmentally, and the dinosaurs couldn't survive in that environment anymore. They died out, and the ones better suited to that new climate were the ones that started to thrive. That's the way this works. So you've got it exactly backward. Earth is not right for us. We are right for Earth. Now, if there is a God, if there is an intelligent creator out there, that is actually the evidence one would look to. And it goes on and on. But as I said, that is the difference between the theist and the atheist. But nonetheless, that is still evidence. No, it's not evidence. It's a retcon. It's retroactive continuity. It's, here's what we think, here's what we see, let's make them somehow mesh together. But that's not the way this works. You find evidence and go where the evidence points, even if it's not what you think or want. If there was an intelligent designer, we would expect a creation. We would expect these things, and that's exactly what we find. Well, then what I have to ask you is, how would you know? What do you have to compare this universe to? Have you ever seen a universe that wasn't designed? I mean, have you ever seen anything else that God has created that you can compare this universe to? I mean, going back to your airplane example, we can compare an airplane to, say, a car. We can look at the tools that were used to make them. We can look at the ergonomics. We can look at everything and conclude, you know, these are very similar, at least in terms of design and, and paradigms and everything that were used to make them. This was likely built by a human. But you don't have that to compare something to where a god made it. You can't look at another God-created universe. You can't look at a universe that was not created by God and say, well, this is what a universe would look like if it didn't have God's hand in it. So when you say that this universe was created by God because it looks like it, because this is what you would expect to see in a universe created by a deity, well, you're kind of talking out of your butt, like I said before. You don't know that at all. So, the evidence, for starters, has already been given to you. And, as I've just shown, no it hasn't. Or at the very least, it's insufficient evidence. As we know, that's not good enough. You want something even more. You want a person's arm to grow on the spot. But, the question is, does God actually want a follower like that? Follower? Who says I'm going to be a follower? If we're still talking about belief. We're still talking about God proving his existence. 
God proving his existence doesn't mean he'll get my allegiance or my loyalty or my obedience. Not in the least. I still have to agree with and approve of everything that this deity stands for. I'm sorry, but belief is just step one. Loyalty is step two. Does God want someone to believe in him when he has to spoon feed you everything? No, it doesn't work like that. And quite frankly, that is very logical, rational, and reasonable. Are you kidding me? It's not any of those things. How is it logical, reasonable, or rational to tell people, no, no, don't ask for all the facts. Run on faith instead. Believe without the facts. I want you to be my follower without giving you enough information to make sure it's the right choice. How is that reasonable, logical, or rational? This isn't someone who actually expects people to have integrity. This is someone who expects people to run on automatic instead of thinking. I mean, would you prefer to have a follower who believes in you out of sincerity and you know he's a loyal follower to you? Or would you prefer to have a follower in which you have to give him everything, you always have to satisfy him, you have to make everything so crystal clear for him, even though it's already been given to him, even though you've given him a lot, but he wants everything on the plate right there for him to join you and become your follower. Well, for starters, you make it sound as though there's no difference whatsoever between being given enough information to make an informed choice and being handed material goods. You make that sound exactly the same and it's not. But if I were a deity, if I wanted followers, you know what? I'd want them to be well informed. If these are people that I expect to be accomplishing things, or if these are people I expect to be representing me, I would want those people to be well informed, to be the kinds of people that would seek out information and not make decisions before they know it's the right decision because they've done the research, they've sought out the facts, they've sought out the information, they don't run on faith, they don't run on automatic, they think, they make sure before they do what they're gonna do. If I were a deity, those are the kind of people that I would want following me, not just mindless drones, not just people who accept whatever they're told. I want people who question what they're told. I want people who question my orders, at least until they know, yeah, this really is the right decision. This will accomplish the goal, and the goal is a good thing. That might make life more difficult for me, as someone who has followers, and obviously I don't really, but if I did, yeah, that may, might, might make my life a little more complicated, might make it a little more difficult. But at least I know the people who are under my command are intelligent. Hell, they could probably make decisions for themselves on their own without me because they're the kinds of people who seek out information, who demand the facts before they act, before they decide. Yes, yes, I think a god would want that. And I want no part of a god who doesn't. Because what does that say about me? If I'm a follower of that god, it says there's a very high potential I'm a dumbass. Just saying. Now out of the two, which do you really want? Which is worth more? I think we know the answer. I mean, even forget a deity now. Even in simple, pure human terms. Even in simple, humanitarian terms. When you want to pick somebody on your side, we know who you're going to pick. You're not going to pick the guy who wants everything from you in order to follow you and be a supporter of you over the person who is sincere to you, who is accepting of what you've already given him and doesn't demand everything in order to believe or to follow you. What we've already been given, asking for everything, how is it that asking that this God that apparently is going to be giving me instructions and expecting me to follow rules actually show up and prove that he, she, it, or they is real? How is that asking for everything? I mean, come on. I don't think saying, hey, I need to know you're there with my senses in an unambiguous, objective way is asking for everything. 
And basically what you're saying is, obey the invisible general. You are going to have a commanding officer who will tell you to do things, but that officer does not actually show up, and you can't hear them, and the orders you're given either come in the form of an ancient book or feelings that may well be your imagination for all you know. But you have to obey them, and you don't get to know. And asking to get to know that this general is really there is asking for everything. Bullshit, dude. Bullshit. And trying to make that sound like reasonable? I find that insulting, dude. Seriously, this video was not meant to be ponage, but I'm sorry, that pisses me off. That, that you think so little of my intelligence and my integrity that I would actually go along with that? That anyone would go along with that? Anybody should be insulted by that. Anybody. Seriously, that is utter bullshit. So I am not going to obey the Invisible General or your God. Not unless I get to see and hear. Not going to happen. Anything else is running on automatic instead of thinking. Now, similarly with God, he doesn't simply want uh, people to follow him after he's uh, given them everything and made everything so clear for them and angels appearing right before them. I mean, then what's the point? What's the point of what? What exactly do you think it is that this God is trying to accomplish? That he wants anyone without an ounce of integrity to actually be his followers? And all the people who can actually think for themselves and who demand evidence before they'll believe in things? Uh, that the, the people who cannot be built by con artists, that he doesn't want anything to do with them? No, no. He wants, he wants the gullible. That's what your God wants. Your God wants the people who can fall for anything. Okay, I've heard Pascal's wager before, where you should believe in a god just because if you don't, you might end up in hell, and if you do, you haven't lost anything. Bullshit. I made up Kate's wager a while back, where God actually wants the people who can think for themselves, the intelligent ones, that that's who your God wants in heaven. And so the ones who don't believe in this God because they're in, there's insufficient evidence, well, this whole thing's a test. Your God's finding the ones with integrity, and we, we are the ones who will be taken up to, to heaven when we're dead because we didn't believe without sufficient evidence. Now, if that's not true, you know what you haven't lost? Your integrity. But you know what you've gained? Intelligence. Yeah, Kate's wager. Far better than Pascal's wager. So, seriously, when you think about it, which one would your god want? I don't think it's the followers. No, no. Actually, I doubt it. I don't think your god exists at all, but if he, she, it, or they does, your god wants the intelligent ones who can think for themselves, who demand evidence. That's who your god wants. I mean, that's that's easy. You've been given everything, and now you're going to believe, and now you want to, to be out with God, and then later he's going to reward you. I mean, that's that's nothing. Nothing? Nothing? How is that nothing? If you show up unambiguously and tell people, I have a set of rules, please follow them, and then they do, how is that nothing? How is that not deserving of a reward? They were virtuous. Because they had a set of rules to follow, and you were there to tell them. And they said, yeah, all right. And they weren't bad people. And thus you reward them for their virtue. How is that nothing? Why is faith so important? Why is credulity so important to your God? Because we don't need faith and credulity to, to, to behave ourselves. And, and if behaving ourselves is not the thing that's important, if faith, if belief without proof, belief without evidence is what's important, why? D does your God feed on faith somehow? Is credulity God's crunchies? Is that what it is? I mean, I know you're saying loyalty is best when, when you don't know that the person you're giving your loyalty to exists, which makes no fucking sense. So I'm hoping you can explain it to me in a way that makes more sense. I realize we have a, a, a clash of perspectives, a clash of worldviews here, but I'm trying to explain to you why what you're saying doesn't make sense to someone who doesn't already believe it. Because I don't believe what you're saying. And if you want me to be on your side, if you want me to believe like you do, you got to give me more than this. You got to make it make sense in my head. You can you can thumbs this down and you can 
not like it, but we all know that um, logically this makes perfect sense. Well, as I've just pointed out, no, we don't all see this as perfectly logical. We really don't. Some of us have spotted gigantic gaping holes in your logic. Now, what I'm hoping is that you can do one of two things. First, I hope that you can either bridge those gaps, that patch those holes I found in your logic. I'm hoping you can say, you know what, you're right, I forgot to mention this factor and that gets rid of the problems you found, or, or oh, here's you know another way to look at it that, that will bridge those gaps or something. Some way to say, oh, you know what, yeah, okay, I explained it badly, here, here is what I am actually saying, you know, um, that, that makes what you're saying no longer relevant or no longer necessary or something. I'm hoping that you can explain it to me in a way that will make me go, oh, okay, yeah. But I doubt that's going to happen. So I'm hoping that you can do number two. I'm hoping that you have the integrity to say, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. I never looked at it that way. And now that you point it out that way, gosh, I never saw it before. But yeah, yeah, there are problems here. I, I, I give up. You know, I'm hoping you can do that. But, to be perfectly honest, I, I, I doubt either one of those is actually going to happen. In fact, I fully expect you to double down on what you've already said. I've dealt with enough theists that I'm fairly certain you're just, like, any response you give will just be to reiterate what you've already said. So, I'm hoping I'm wrong about that. I really am. I'm, I'm hoping that you will give me option one or two. But, I don't know. We'll see. We don't even like to associate with people like that. What, you mean people who believe stuff for no good reason? Nah, no, I like to associate with them when I want something from somebody. Otherwise, I like to surround myself with people who can think for themselves, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Please take the time to rate this video. And hey, if you dig what I do, subscribe. And please visit my Sazzle store, where you'll find all kinds of Bionic Dance merchandise. And remember, if it can't be in your hand, it's all in your head.